this is Leon Cruz for the Intense Apex Alpha Male blog, podcast, and website. And for leoncruz.com, where I give you my news, views, and reviews. And <clears throat> for this channel, my bodybuilding and fitness channel, I haven't posted anything uh, as of late. I've been going on and off with that channel. But for today, uh, I would like to talk to you about the passing of Rich Piana and a little bit about Dallas McCarver, who was a 26-year-old up-and-coming champion bodybuilder. Um, I first learned about uh, Rich Piana uh, by watching Rick Drayson's videos. He was one of the first people to interview Rich uh, that I know that I first, for the first time I've seen him. I didn't see him in, in any of the uh, muscle magazines. Uh, but uh, I first got to see who he was and what he, what he was all about through um, Rick Drayson's introduction of uh, Rich Piana. At that time, he was with Mutant Nutrition. And um, although I never met Rich, I truly appreciated his candid uh, view on the sport of bodybuilding from his perspective, which was a, uh, a very extreme perspective. And uh, I really appreciated his, his, his uh, candid view on steroids and growth hormone and training and supplements and nutrition and eating. And I had much respect for him for the goals he set out to achieve and actually achieved. He was financially independent, which allowed him to train full time, work on his business ventures once he left Mutant Nutrition and went to create his own uh, 5% uh, products and um, which are fantastic in my opinion. I've used a couple of his products are very good. I've never met Rich Piana other than uh, the videos that I've seen on YouTube and I followed him on Instagram and Facebook and I've come to realize that he was a very polarizing and an exciting person and figure in the sport of bodybuilding which has been lacking for a very very long time from what I understand uh, the critics uh, of the sport have mentioned that ever since Arnold left the personalities of a lot of the bodybuilders are like a toilet bowl uh, but Rich uh, managed to add uh, excitement to the sport and he's been to mostly all the expos if you've been to any of them uh, you would see him there in his booth and based on what I heard and seen uh, through videos uh, he was very popular uh, with a lot of the people, whether they were bodybuilders or fitness buffs or uh, the average person as well. Uh, Rich had a knack for attracting people and, and um, working with people. Now I noticed that in, in YouTube uh, a lot of the bodybuilding fitness channel, we are like a brotherhood of iron. Uh, we train and we try to uh, give advice and uh, follow the lifestyle, the bodybuilding lifestyle. Now the lifestyle for some may be taken to extremes, others um, use it to stay uh, healthy and active and others use it for sport. My personal opinion with all of that I think it's all great and you have to be very careful especially if you're pushing it to the extremes and you're getting older you have to be very careful because life is wonderful and you don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. A lot of people on YouTube and uh, and the social media are leaving stupid comments, hateful comments, and in reality those people really don't matter. The stigma on bodybuilding and drug use uh, is all mushed into uh, the same thing as narcotics and, and cocaine and heroin and all these things. Uh, in actuality, steroids and narcotics are two different things. As you do get older, uh, testosterone replacement therapy is important. And steroids are not the villains uh, that uh, the public, the media, and all the people who basically know nothing about the sport of bodybuilding or er ergogens has made it out to be. Unfortunately, many athletes uh, in wrestling and in bodybuilding do mix uh, narcotics with bodybuilding uh, ergogens and uh, that's a big no-no. That's not to say that Rich Piana did that, but in one of his videos when he was married uh, to the to his Scandinavian wife who wanted the green card, the woman who was using him for the green card and stealing from him, he did make mention that uh, 
he did dabble in uh, hard drugs, uh, uh, street drugs, the dirty street drugs. So we don't know if that had something to do with uh, what causes heart attack and him collapsing and, and, and uh, causing him to get a concussion and injure his brain and thereafter pass away. I believe that if Rich Piana would have uh, not hit his head, quite possibly he would have recovered from the heart attack. I, I believe that. But what complicated the issue was uh, he fell on his head and the doctors had to induce a coma on him so that the brain can slowly recover from that. And it's very sad either way you look at it. Um, I'm saddened today to hear that he passed away yesterday. Today is um, Saturday, August the 26th, 2017. I heard that he passed away yesterday. And I first heard it from RX Muscle, uh, Dave Palumbo's um, uh, uh, podcast uh, and, and video uh, podcast and blog. And <clears throat> it saddens me to see that uh, this guy, this, uh, this amazing person, um, uh, passed away. It seems like yesterday, in the beginning of the new year of 2016, he was going through uh, a muscle mass transformation to build big muscle and size. I've come to appreciate Rich Piana at a time where uh, there was a time where to get someone like a Rich Piana to open up about the sport of bodybuilding and to teach people was like pulling teeth. You, you were only you would only get things from the muscle magazines or if you were really in the know. Other than that, you didn't get the information that Rich was given out. So uh, that's that's uh, very important to know that we're living in a time where wonderful people like Rich went out of his way to put himself out there. When a person puts themselves out there, uh, you run the risk of uh, people uh, attacking you, putting you down, envying your success. Because Rich Piano was very successful, financially independent and very successful. And he was a great bodybuilder as well, in my opinion. Uh, if you look at his competitive years, he was, a, he was an amazing uh, uh, semi-professional. Then when he left that behind to pursue his business interests, he continued with his career uh, in training, building his physique. Unfortunately, uh, at the young age of 46, he passed away due to uh, the complications he had uh, with his heart attack and him falling and, and getting a concussion. I pray to God that um, he made his peace with the Lord and that... Um, he, he gets to know the Lord, or at least got to know the Lord. You see, we're not here forever. You have another young guy, Dallas McCarver, who was a young 26-year-old bodybuilder who, they said, passed away due to choking. He was eating food and he choked and he suffocated and passed away. I don't know how true that is. As time goes on, we'll, we'll learn more about what happened there. And, and Dallas McCarver had his whole life ahead of him. Uh, the guy uh, was like a shooting star in the sport of bodybuilding. If you look carefully at his pictures, you will see that uh, he was an amazing guy. And uh, quickly moving up in the bodybuilding ranks. He was 26 years old and um, his whole future ahead of him. And he passed away also. You see, life here is not forever. Sooner or later we are all going to pass away. And what you do in this life for God is what really counts. And my advice to all of you who uh, met Rich and Dallas uh, McCarver and are pondering life and death issues, get to know the Lord. That's, that's what I'm telling, that's what I can say to you. And the way to do that is this way. Don't waste your time with religion because you're not going to get to know the Lord through religion. My advice to you is open up your Bible and read the book of John to get to know who Jesus is and the book of Romans. Get to know who God is because everyone, when they pass away, wants to go to heaven. But unfortunately, not everyone does. 
And to find out why that is, read the book of John at least three times and read the book of Romans at least three times. And hopefully you'll begin to understand why that is. I pray for Rich's family that they take, uh, um, that the Lord gives them peace in their heart. And I pray that Rich, that the, the good Lord in heaven has uh, mercy on Rich's soul. So that's my uh, view on that. And um, I'm going to miss Rich, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to miss him. Thank God for all the videos he put out there, because we can always watch those. And if you can learn how to download those, I would advise you to do that. Uh, as we know, uh, YouTube is also um, taking down channels and, and, and demonetizing a lot of the channels. So Rich's channel may, may be one of those channels that they may take down. So my advice to you is to hold on to those videos, because there's a lot of great content and information that we can use to help us fulfill our bodybuilding and fitness goals as well. One of the main things I admire about Rich is that he lived his life with the purpose of not being like everyone else. He had a mindset that made him a champion. Unfortunately, Rich's lifestyle was that of pushing the envelope to extremes in other areas as well. So. As time goes on, we'll be able to see what happened. In the meantime, I want to extend my condolences to the family. May God bless them all. Talk to you again. It would be great if people could, could want to get in shape for themselves, want to look good for themselves, and want to create the body that they feel is the body they want, you know, and not have to, to appease 11 judges that they don't even know and have nothing to do with them, you know. And if you're a judge and I come up to you and I'm going to say, what do you think I need to do, you know, for the next contest to be better? And you say to me, well, I think your arms are a little too big for your shoulders. And so I think you need to let your arms shrink a little bit. Okay, well, I don't want my arms smaller. I want my arms bigger. So now am I gonna change my body and make my body the way you want my body to be when I don't even know you and you're not even in my life? So I'm gonna make my body the way I don't like it for a $10 trophy. I didn't have any pressure to look a certain way, but I always looked the best I could, and I always looked the way I wanted to look. And, um, you know, it, it was enjoyable for me, but I do feel a little bit of pressure to look a certain way. And, um, you know, that's, that's, that's hard because I shouldn't feel that way, but I do. You know, and um, it's, I feel like, I do need to look a certain way for my fans. You know, if I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm telling you this and telling you that, well, I better be following that shit too. You know, I can't show up, you know, saying you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And then I look like shit, you know, what, what is that? So, you know, for me to be able to educate and help people and motivate people, you know, I need to look good myself. It's always been a big part of my life. You know, looking good is something that was instilled in me as a little kid. You know, my mom was a competitive bodybuilder. So she was very into how she looked. And, I was actually raised basically the outer shell is very important, you know, and that's not necessarily a good thing because, you know, it was more about looking good and, you know, looking at like these bodybuilders rather than getting a college education. The thing is, is I can't really say I'm for steroids, but I'm not really against steroids, you know, it's a personal choice. I'm really against young kids taking steroids.